Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the incorrect and the correct way of updating state based on a previous state using the useState hook in React. Now, this also applies to the setState function if you're using class-based components. So first of all, let's take a look at the incorrect way. So let's say we have a button and we've got a handle button click handler here. So anytime we click the button, we fire this function and we're setting the count. We've got some use state here. We've got a count state item and we're setting that count then to whatever count was plus one. So we're incrementing it by one. So this is the incorrect way. Now, the correct way to update state is to pass a callback function to set count. And whenever we pass a function to the setter for that state, so in this instance, set count, so whenever we pass a function to set count, React automatically injects for us the previous state. So then we can use that previous state then, and we want to return the new value based on that previous state. So we've got previous state plus one. Now these will both result in this example in exactly the same thing. But in this quick video, I'm going to show you why using this top method here can be unsafe and using this bottom method is always the safest way to update state based on the previous value of that state. So let's quickly create a new React project. I'm gonna create a new create React app and call it state update. Then I'm going to open the project in Visual Studio Code and let's open source and app.js and let's open a new terminal and let's just run this just so we can see what we've got. And we can see we've got the bare bones create React app project. So let's go back to the code then and in app.js let's remove everything from the markup here and let's add a button and let's put click me async and another button called click me sync. So within app then, let's create two new functions. We want to create a function handle async click and a function handle sync click. Then we need our state item. So let's import use state from React and let's create a new state then. Let's call it const count and set count and set that equal to use state with a default value of zero. Now what we're going to do is we're going to increment the count state whenever we click handle async and handle sync. So first of all let's implement the handle sync click. So let's go on click for the click me sync. Let's go handle sync click and then in handle sync click we want to set count and we want to pass in a callback. So let's put previous count and return then previous count plus one. So let's render this count then above the two buttons. Let's create in a div there. Let's render the count state item. And in the browser then, let's check it out. Let's zoom in a bit here so we can see a bit better. Let's go click me sync and we increment the count by one every time. So let's refresh. So we're back to zero. Let's implement the click me async now. So what we want to do here is we want to add a set timeout. And within this timeout function then, after let's say after two seconds or 2000 milliseconds, then we want to set count. Instead of passing a function to set count, let's update it with this count value. So let's go count plus one. So let's hook up this handle async click to the click me async button. So on click, handle async click. In the browser then, let's take a look. Let's click, click me sync. Let's click, click me async and click me sync before the two second set timeout finishes. And we can see it doesn't increment the counter. Let's click, click me async. And after two seconds, it increments to three. So if we click, click me async, then click me sync, we expect the counter to increment by two. So it should be five. But if we click click me sync before the two second timeout, it doesn't appear to be updating on the click me async. So let's do that again. Click me async, click me sync. The count's four, but after two seconds, it doesn't go up to five. Now, why is this? 
So if we take a look in the code, on the handle async click, whenever we click handle async, this function has already captured this count value. So it doesn't matter if we've then hit handle sync click to increment count, because this count isn't gonna be fed down into the set timeout function here. It's already captured the stale state of count. So this is why we pass a function to a setter function for use state is because we're always going to be receiving within that function the true previous state value. So let's go ahead and copy this set count from handle sync click and paste it into handle async click. Let's hit save. Then back in the browser then, let's do exactly what we did before. We want to hit click me async and before the two second timeout, hit click me sync. So let's do that. And we can see after two seconds, we've correctly updated the state. So this is why it's really important that whenever we're updating state based on a previous value, we always pass it a function to the setter and not reference the actual value of that state item. So if you found this video useful, please subscribe, like, and comment. Also check out my Udemy profile where I've got over 10,000 students and over 1,000 reviews with an average review rating of 4.5 stars out of 5. And I'm constantly updating and creating courses all around React. So I'll leave a link to all of these courses in the description if you want to check them out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.